Uh-huh. Salmon to the Swinomish tribe is like the buffalo to the tribes of the Midwest. It is, it is the food that the Creator has blessed us with. Every year they hold ceremonies to bless fishermen and honor the returning salmon. But over the last century, the number of salmon making their way home has dropped significantly. The Pacific king salmon is now an endangered species. If you take a, a community away from its land and its lagoon and you place them in, a, in, in, in another atoll, uh, the, the, the fabric, the social fabric of that community is ripped apart. The land is where it gives you the freedom to express yourself as you are as a Marshallese person with your traditional uh, culture. When you move people off their islands where they live to do the testing, you break down their entire community structure. What is the impact on health? You know, the, the stress issues. You contaminate their lands. They can't grow things that they used to eat. When you urbanize, infectious diseases tend to take off. They get more diabetic because, you know, they're eating a Western diet. All those kinds of things, to me, have actually the larger impact than the ionizing radiation. Chance of resistance from the Amazon, 150 indigenous people from five different tribes going into day eight of an occupation of a work area at the Belamonte Dam construction site. They say promises made to them by the builders and the government have yet to be fulfilled. We would not be here today if the company and the government would have done what they promised to us. In my community, nothing has been done. There is no quality health post, there is no school, they have not built a road for us. My road is the river, and that's going to be dried up. Michael Ogilvy is a suicide response worker for the Derby and Moanjum area. He's been working here for more than 17 years. How normal has suicide become in this community? Um, very normal. I've had eight-year-old kids point out that this is their tree that they want to hang themselves off. They actually mark out their tree? Yeah, identified trees that they want to hang themselves off. And what's the rate of suicide in the Kimberley region? Uh, in the Kimberley region, it's probably up to 30 completed suicides in the last 12 months. Um, and that's at epidemic level. Lloyd Nolgett believes a lack of opportunity is contributing to a downward spiral. There's nothing there for them but alcohol and drugs. There's nothing exciting or good for them to enjoy. Michael Ogilvy takes us to a popular spot where adults and children go to drink alcohol. Kimberley's alone, they drink three times as much alcohol than anywhere else in Australia. You know, a normal sitting for the boys to have a drink is 90 cans of beer. David Cole runs Balinyu, which means creation in the local language. It's about giving the kids a safe place and a culturally appropriate place to just have some time out, get away from things, clear their mind, share some tools with them, give them some seeds of understanding and basically help them work through the challenges they got and give them a safe place to just let things go. And how is it culturally appropriate? The, the biggest aspect of the program is cultural reconnection. It's getting the kids um, to build their self-esteem and pride through identity and culture. And that's the, that's the key component to the program. The beach had one of the highest rates of suicide per capita in the world. At its highest point, a group of elderly ladies decided to take matters into their own hands. Gaili Marika Yunapingu is a ski beach elder. She says it was the hanging suicide of a 21-year-old that sparked a cluster of other suicides in her community. He was the first one to commit suicide. The first one in this community? In this community. Gaili's younger sister also committed suicide. That was when her family took action 
seven years ago, creating a volunteer service called the Manga Suicide Prevention Group. What do you do to prevent suicide in the community? Um, I walk. Me and my sisters, we walk the streets and listen for the noise, where it's coming from. The women run a 24-hour suicide watch, often patrolling the streets with only small torches. They mediate in family issues and mental troubled youths. We follow up the next day, go to the house and sit down, have a cup of tea, have a cigarette with the person and sort of, you know, not in an angry way, but like in cancelling.